everybody. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Um, again, my name is Chris Kasky. I'm from Pitchfork. Here we have PJ Morton. Yes. Um, we're going to kind of skip the introductions, and really what we want to do since we have about 15 minutes to talk is, is start uh, with basically your last 14 years or so. You know, I think we're in New Orleans. This is a technology-centric conference, but ultimately, uh, well, I think we'd, we're going to hit on some of that stuff. You're a New Orleans native. You're someone that has, that has left and has come home. And ultimately, that story is, is fascinating. And it, and it would be good for both myself and I'm sure everyone to hear kind of the genesis of where things started and, and how you've made your way home. Sure. Uh, well, um, like you said, 14 years ago, or yeah, about 14 years now, I left New Orleans. I graduated high school and um, left New Orleans. And, and the reason I left um, was because there was so much talent here in New Orleans. No lack of creativity here. The culture is so unique. Um, but there was a lack of uh, infrastructure here for me to, if I wasn't a jazz musician um, or even a, a rapper at the time, because you had no limit and cash money uh, gearing up, um, I was neither of those. So I felt like I had to leave. I went to school in Atlanta initially, then went to um, New York for a second and then uh, ended up in L.A. after I joined Maroon 5. Um, but, you know, I'm back now for the same reason that I, I left, um, and that is um, to try to bring some infrastructure. I just uh, started a label called Morton Records, and I want to uh, bring the infrastructure that forced me to leave. I want to, you know, be able to shine the light on this unique city that has all this talent and has all this culture, um, uh, I, I think it was my duty to come and do that. When I started to look around and there was, there's some success now with the band I'm in and, and the songwriting and, and things I've done in the past, um, uh, now I felt like it was just important if there was going to be some type of legacy and something that I want to leave in this earth for people to remember me by, um, it wouldn't just be hit records. It's like, okay, what's, what's continuing this legacy? So. Um, I felt like I should just bring it all back home, and um, you know I feel like uh, this isn't a, a huge techie conversation, right. <laughs> okay. but um, I think technology is what has allowed me to even uh, come home and set up shop in this way. Um, it used to be where you you had to be. Well, when I moved to Atlanta, it was right when Outcast was blowing up and that whole system, and LaFace was coming. Uh, was in Atlanta, so there was some uh, infrastructure starting there. But before that, even it was you had to be in New York or LA because um, it, there was before social media where you had eyes on you. Right. So you had to actually physically be there to play at a club in New York or play at a club in LA for people to um, discover you. Um, but now you do a good enough performance and post it somewhere online. Um, people can find you from all around the world. So um, that technology has allowed uh, me to come here and focus on this talent and shine a light really. I think it's the, the, the uh, new age version of Chess Records being in Chicago, yep. Stax being in Memphis, um, you know, all these labels having uh, strong independent labels in their cultures and really just shining a light on how they live and how they work and how they play music. So um, that, that, that's why I'm here and, that, and, and technology has allowed me to do that. Yeah, and so I mean, starting a label nowadays, I'm, I'm actually speaking later today about some of the kind of dynamics of what it means to be a label, but how technology plays into that is important, but it would be interesting, you know, considering your career with Maroon 5, your career as a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a, a solo musician and a you know, band leader and whatnot, how do you think about a label? Like, what does a label mean now? Be, you know, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, bringing out what it means to be in New Orleans and finding ways to kind of shine the, a, pr a proper light on what's happening here and all the different things that are emerging. Right. That's obviously why part of the reason why we're here now is because, you know, this city, I haven't been here in ages personally, and I come in here and it's like, you know, not only has it changed, but it's, it's been maintained and changing for the better, and you can feel the energy. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean, like, as now as someone that is, you know, obviously found success as a musician, but is, is kind of transitioning into a label mode, what is, like, what is your vision and goals for that? Right, well, you know, I admit it's, it's a little insane to want to start a label in this day and age right now. Um, but I do, f I do feel that w the same thing that's hurt the industry um, over a period of time um, 
are some of the values that I want to instill in my label. Um, you know, um, we inside of my label kind of call it, we want to make it the New Orleans Motown in the sense, uh, I think a, a lost art is, is um, art is development. Yep. Um, I think, you know, I go to these labels now uh, with an artist uh, before I was starting Morton Records or, you know, they, they want you to have, you know, a million followers already. They want you to have your music done. And, you know, you used to have demos, right, where it's like an A&R at a label, the music guys were supposed to be able to hear right. where I can take this. But there's no creativity at these labels anymore, so they hear it, and it's got to be, like, fully done, ready to go to the radio right there. So there's no development, and I think that has worked for a few, and it, and it has allowed you to get quick hits here and there. But in the long run, I think it's what's hurt um, the music industry. So I want to go back to the basics and get back to the artist development, you know, of it. And I mean, that's outside of the music. That's teaching them how to perform live. Yep. That's teaching them how to hold interviews. That's teaching them how they should dress at certain things. Um, so I, I do believe, you know, uh, while it's risky, I believe that putting the time into those things won't just give me success right now and get a hit on an artist right now, but um, some longevity. Um, you know, we were talking in, in one of the other uh, panels I was on about, uh, because, you know, we got on the subject of Prince, mm -hmm. right, and how, how he was able to be so effective and how he's so missed now because he was a part of our lives, but also how we didn't really know him. He was very mysterious in that way. Um, and the day and age that we live in with the social media and stuff, you're not able to get away with being so okay. mysterious. You, you kind of suffer from that. If you try to be mysterious, they're like, okay, well, we'll just yeah. go and follow this really? other person. Um, so um, with that, you know, I think um, we've, we've lost some of that. And I think that's where the development comes in. Um, you know, I think our modern day, one of the people who've, who's been able to do that is Adele, right? She's found success. We don't see what she's doing every day. She's not posting online all the time. So I do think it's possible when the focus gets back to the music right. and the development of this real person, this real artist that's bringing some real art to the world. Yeah. So I'm going to focus on that. And I think that's, for me, that's what the label um, is about. So uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm no, rambling. <laughs> but um, I have it's, doing the, it's doing the real work and then using this social media and all these things we have to put steroids on the real right. work as opposed to this is our focus and then, you know, the real work doesn't matter. Figure it out later. I mean, yeah. that's the thing that, so the thing to me that's inspiring, and I actually don't think it's a backwards idea that you're starting a label now. Yeah. Because especially hearing you describe it, I mean, so much of what's happening now, there's so much noise, there's so much thing, so many things happening, whether it's music or any uh, news, whatever. Sure. But there's a lack of perspective, right? There's a lack of like a point of view or something that you mean. And for a long time, you know, major labels are one thing, I think. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, of problems that you suggest exist that I think I agree with. But more broadly, like, when you get down to the nitty gritty and you think about what it really is, it's, it's having an identity and having that perspective that's going to shine through. And that's when you look at any label, whatever, what it, like, you, you know, ones you mentioned, you look at Sub Pop or Matador, mm -hmm. you kind of know what these things mean and then the communities yeah. that they're cultivating. So like as someone that lives on the other side of the music industry where I'm not releasing anything but we're talking about it and viewing it, it's really inspiring, right? Because it's like we do the glut of social media and the over importance of how big something is, it really clouds the idea of quality. I mean. I, You've seen both sides, but like, how do you, what do you think the struggles will be in getting there? I mean, what, what are you finding with artists you're working with at your label or um, even yourself just in terms of finding that balance where, I mean, obviously Adele's huge, so it's easy for her to maybe remain obscure because everything's turnkey. Now, yeah. So as you're building your artists or so you're building, you know, what your point of view might be, what, have, what are the kind of hurdles that you're encountering if it's the social media or otherwise? Right. I think it's, it's the grassroots. I, I, I look at it um, now you kind of have to approach it like a political campaign. Um, we have um, politicians who are virtually unknowns to the world, right? And they do work in their communities and use these things, use social media to start a movement there. I mean, I feel like it's just going back to the basics. Grassroots, um, getting my artists, um, for instance, my, the first girl group that I have, they're from Memphis, Tennessee. and. So we have to get them, you know, get people excited in Memphis. Yep. 
yep. and then move that energy to, to the next city. It's, it's, a, it's a way more pain, a painstaking process, you know. Um, but that's what I mean. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of longevity in that yep. way um, because they're not able to really be obscure not at this point. Like it's it's unfortunate because when that when that is genuine genuinely your personality and you just you just want to do the music right. and you don't want to be on there. Thank goodness they are actually like want to be out. They want to you know? talk. <laughs> yeah, they want to talk. That helps. Um, but I think it sucks for people who don't want to be that. Um, you know. So at this point, it, it's just kind of a part of the. You got to look at that. I mean, that's as much a part of being an artist now as, as anything. So you, you've got to factor that in. Not that I wouldn't sign somebody because they weren't outgoing, but I definitely think about it, you know? So I think that is one of the pitfalls. It's like, how, you know, how, not how your numbers, because I, I don't agree with that. I feel like if you're big where you are and you got a thousand people where you are, I, I can get a thousand people in this other city to believe that same way. Um, but they do have to have the ability to because I think now the music is just a part of the, what you're selling. Yep. People want to buy into you as a personality. They want to buy into you as a brand. So um, the focus is trying to get people to understand you as a personality, as an artist. And then the music is kind of like, um, you know, it comes along with it. A, a great example is um, I joined Maroon 5 before The Voice, right, before yep. The Voice. And, um, peop, you know, Maroon 5 had been around for 10 years before The Voice, and uh, people were there for the music, right? But when he joined The Voice, and this is a good thing, nobody's complaining about this, but <laughs> the fact that they were able to, um, and thank goodness he was likable on TV, right. <laughs> because yeah, it could go the other way, <laughs> but because people liked Adam as a person, you know, as a personality, we started to get fans. I mean, the music was good, so once they came aboard, they were like, oh, okay, I can get down with this. But they weren't coming on board because of the music, where, whereas that's the way it used to be. But they were coming on board because it's like, I like this guy, so let me see what he yeah, does, he does yeah. you know? And then we're able to keep them because the music is good. But that, that is kind of a downfall. I mean, it's a gift and a curse because it's like, you gotta be out there and people gotta buy into you. Um, in order to be, in order for them to even pay attention to yeah. the music. Yeah, it's got to be intense. I mean, it's yeah. the, 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 to try to compete with the noise has got to be it, very, very intense as an artist. And I, I mean, that's why I think, I mean, I applaud you for the label side of that because, you know, it's, again, it, it, quality is what's the most important thing, regardless of how big you can get. It's a matter of how much you can stand behind your art, I would assume. Sure. That's what we think about, it, regardless of whether or not how we're defining the word art anyway. But you know, it's it's not only admirable, but it's exciting because it's you know you're reinventing what labels are now, right? Yeah. So you're using technology, you're using different ways of kind of like grassroots movements, and then you're just using old old school you know music industry tactics, which are still important, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so I guess you know to bring it all home, like like what now that we're in New Orleans and you know this is happening here, and you're seeing things just as a you know having your family come home and basically being back home full circle. Yeah. Like, what do you feel like is uh, is next here? You know, as a, as for the city and, and as a part of the city. Well, I you know I was actually one of the guys who didn't want to. I felt like I never was going to move home. It wasn't my plan to ever move home. And I came here and I just felt a different energy. I felt like people were more open. Um, more ready for change. I think, you know, with all the bad that Katrina did, um, one of the good things was, was pushing people out of their comfort zones. And, um, you know, God bless the people who came back after the storm. Because when they came back, they came back with different perspectives. I have friends who had never, before Katrina, had never left New Orleans. Right. S some had never left their neighborhoods, you know, like w within a, a small radius. Um, and it forced them to look at different per perspectives and how different people live. And it's, 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 now they've brought that energy back. And now New Orleans all of a sudden, with its, still with its charm and its unique culture, has now expanded to, to be able to even allow me to come and talk about these things and, and for them to process it in another way. Right. Because people used to look at me crazy when I said I wanted to be like a, a pop musician. Right. 
They're like, what? You don't want to play in the French Quarter right. every week? I'm like, no, I want to be on the radio. You know, but now it's like, not only do they support that, but I have artists who come up to me all the time who want more, and there's growth. So, you know, for all the bad that it did, um, I think that we're in a, a better place. And now 10 years after, I think all the, uh, you know, because I, we're shell-shocked as well. And I think it's t taken 10 years for us to snap, you know, back into it and really understand what we have. Because that's for me, it clicked for me how, how unique and right. how special this place is. Um, and so I'm just happy to be back and happy to export that all this uniqueness to right. the world. That's great, man. Yeah. I'm sure that I imagine everyone's happy to have you. And it's been great talking to you. So a lot of love. thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. listening. Thanks, Appreciate everybody. It. All right. Thank you, man.